Hello, and welcome to this tutorial showing you how to design an interactive wall experience using LumoPlay. You'll need the following things if you want to follow along with this tutorial. LumoPlay software, an internet connection, and the Photoshop working file which you can download from a link in the video description. You'll also need some sort of graphic image editing program that is capable of opening a Photoshop file that has layers. Before I start, I want to show you how I found the images for this tutorial. The stock site I use the most often is 123RF. I typed in paper heart balloons and searched for vector graphics. Valentine's Day is coming up, so I thought this would be appropriate. This is what I'm looking for. I'm also going to download a similar image so I can copy the clouds. I've chosen vector images because it will be really easy to extract the elements I want to use. I use Illustrator to copy the parts I want into a working document in Photoshop. This makes it easier to make sure my graphics are the right size before I save them to be imported into the LumoPlay app. Before I copy graphic elements from a vector composition like this, I delete any objects that create shadows because these don't usually look right if you copy and paste them from Illustrator to Photoshop. The working document in Photoshop is 1920 by 1080, which is the same resolution as my final display. When I paste each element in Photoshop, I choose the Pixel Import option and resize the graphic in relation to the other elements in the composition. For the balloon template, I like my balloons to all be slightly different sizes. I keep each graphic element on its own layer, and I name my layers and save my working file often. If I need to make a change because a client wants something bigger or smaller, the working document is a fast way to make a proof and send it for approval before remaking the entire app. Once all the graphic elements that I want to use are the right size, I select each element in each layer and copy and paste the graphic into a new Photoshop document. I delete the white background layer and save the element as a .png image. Photoshop automatically creates a new document the size of whatever is in my clipboard, so this method saves me from having to crop the working file a whole bunch of times. I'm not sure if this works in other graphics software. If you know of a different way to do this, please leave a comment. If you downloaded the working Photoshop file linked in the description of the video, you can pause the video and copy, paste, and save each of the elements to practice exporting your individual graphics as .png files. Your final collection of graphics should look like this when you're done. When all of the graphics are ready, open LumoPlay and choose the Balloon Pop template. One at a time, open each section and add graphics. In the Overlay section, I can add an idle image that appears when there's no interaction, or a logo that sits on top of everything else. I'm just adding a mask today to frame the composition with some semi-transparent clouds. I can choose an image or a video loop for the background. If you don't know how to make a video loop, there's a link to a stock site I like and contact information for the artist I hired to make the loops we're using as the default videos in our templates. After deleting the default balloons, I can add all my new balloons at the same time by holding down shift and selecting them all. Every time I change my balloon density, which is just the maximum number of balloons that will ever appear, the balloons come in from the edge. A fun little trick is to make the balloons go faster by adjusting the speed. That way, I can see what the total number of balloons will look like, quickly. I can add confetti the same way I added the balloons. Once I'm done, I give my new app a name and I save it. If you're making your app for a different display, like a projector or LED tiles, you should plug the final display into your computer and test your app before you publish it. This is especially important if the aspect ratio of the screen you're using to design your app is different from the screen that you're going to be displaying your app on. I'm done, so I'm publishing my app. As soon as it's published, 
I can immediately launch it and access it from all of my installations. At the time that I made this video, our company is still in lockdown, so we're unable to get into our lab. I've installed an interactive floor in my loft so my cat can demonstrate the app for you. I'm sorry I don't have an interactive wall installed here yet, but I'll be putting one in soon. That's it for the first Motion Maker tutorial. Please let me know in the comments which template you'd like me to cover next. Yeah. <laughs>